You're listening to the Beyond Sunday podcast, where faith journeys extend beyond the Sunday sermon. Join Pastor Jeff Carlson and guests as they dive deeper into spiritual topics, offering insights and reflections that resonate with believers from all walks of life. Join us for enriching conversations in faith, life, and community. This is Beyond Sunday. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Beyond Sunday. Pastor Jeff, Pastor Zach. Hello. Pastor Andrew's here helping us out today, and uh, we're just glad that you've come to join us uh, as we discuss uh, a couple of things that I think are uh, are actually uh, second second message type stuff from a real message we just preached. Not everything we do is like that. Uh, but just here recently, I preached on margin and building margin in our life, and we went through several scriptures. If you haven't watched that message, it's from October 6th. And it's it's odd, uh, Jeff. I didn't get to hear that message because yeah. they scheduled me extra hours to work. Well, I had no margin. That was not me. <laughs> yeah, you had no margin. They took all your margin. They stole my margin. Well, I'm very sorry so, about so that. I will listen to this. Well, I'm going to summarize. We went through several scriptures and just kind of like my challenge was let's let's examine ourselves in light of these scriptures. Some of them are, you know, put on love and, you know, don't speak harshly, just all these things yeah. that often uh, get swallowed up when we don't have margin in our life. Those are the first things to go. Our attitude, our spirit, our our uh, way that we interact, whatever it is. If we're stressed out in those areas yeah. uh, or in the lack of margin in our life, then those are sometimes the things that go. Uh, and so I talked about, you know, two keys to margin, com, uh, contentment, being content. Is there a place in your life that you'd care to admit and confess here before the Lord and all creation that you've struggled with contentment? I, I know I just put I, you right on the spot. Yeah, no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, <laughs> well, even since you've been here, you know, I, I, my career yeah, it's kind of a uh, well. I'm this full time. No, I'm going to be that full time. No, yeah. I'm back here full time. Yeah. And uh, you, you even brought me back for for to help me cover up for what uh, deficit yeah. I had. So I, I would say, you know, being being content on uh, the career thing has been difficult for me. Maybe yeah. not as difficult as for other people. Uh, I never felt like even in the. <clears throat> when you know you were doing your your sort of hospital hospice chaplaincy, yeah. and when that got pulled back some, and that's when we brought you more on here to help fill that gap, and then we used you a little bit more too, because you had more margin in your in your schedule. I had a bunch after so, they cut my cut yeah, me to you know sixteen great. sixteen hours a week working. Yeah, so you were <laughs> able me a lot of margin. You were able to pick up some some small group stuff and some yeah. counseling, whatever. Uh, <clears throat> I never felt like. You were stressed out about it. Now maybe you were, <laughs> but you hit it really well. If you were, well, well I th I think what you know, being with Lizzie, uh, she has something about her brain. She can budget things out without mm. without putting it in just writing. Like she just works it out. And okay. so you know, we were still had financial margin, but how long will that last oh. when you're only working sixteen well, hours instead of forty? That these. I talked about four areas of margin, schedule, finances, emotion, yeah. uh, and uh, what was the other one? <laughs> the other Oh, physical health. So yeah. what's interesting is, uh, and what you just said, if you have margin built in one area, it lends itself helpfully to another area. Is margin different than a, like a buffer zone? Is it's like it, a buffer. Is that what we're so talking I'll, about? I'll give you the des definition that okay. I have. Margin is the space between your load and your limits. Right. So your load and your limits. And when we live at the limits and we have no margin, we have yeah. no space between our load and our limits. Exactly. That's when we burn out. That's when we die. That's when yeah. we move to empty wells, addictions and, and sinful uh, patterns in our life. That's when those things tend to take root yeah. because we're living not at the load area, but at the limit area. And see, if, if we had been living like we did in the... Uh, decades ago, where yeah. that for every dollar coming in, we already had spent a dollar twenty five. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and a but lot of people live that way. Even now. I know, and that's how we were living. But uh, Lizzie has worked it out where that we don't spend more than we earn. Yeah. So you would say, and it made not having full hours easier. Make so yeah. it, so it you made, didn't have to stress out about it. Yeah. 
Yeah, so yeah. you would you would say he who finds a wife finds a good thing. <laughs> it's true. If they can do math in their head. Yeah, I don't but she can't do the math. I don't know. Oh, she can't I, do the math. She, Jeff, I'm afraid she uses magic or something. I don't, <laughs> <laughs> I, don't I have no idea. I, I don't think that's probably the case. But it, she just she just developed this skill or sense that hey, we need we need more money this week. Uh uh, like, for instance, I can check my bank statement. It says what my deposits were. It says what my withdrawals were. And actually, uh, the previous month, uh, uh, because I started a training program and I had tuition, we spent more than we earned mm. that one month. But you had margin. But we but we could because it was just that one-time thing. Yeah. And now yeah. this month, yeah. we'll catch back up and yeah. we'll be on the level. So it, yeah. it, it relieves the stressful part of it, the anxiety. Well, Tim, Paul tells Timothy and... First Timothy six, he's like godliness with contentment. We're talking about contentment right. as one of the keys to margin is great gain, and yeah. he defines contentment as not being consumed with not just the material things of this world or money of this world, but even the desires of this world, the the temptation, the richness that is in this world. And there is a lot of richness in this world, and I think what he's trying to say is like don't let. Um, the good things in this world, not just the the wicked things, but the, even the good things in this world, don't let those things hold your heart, because only God could should hold your heart. And if you can resist those uh, temptations, and even the good things that God provides in this world, to not captivate us, then you can live with contentment. The uh, the the word there, uh, autarkeia. Um, That's Greek how for you say it. it's only in the New Testament twice. I'm looking at Strong's notes now, uh, and one of the times he actually instead of contentment he says sufficiency. Mm. In okay. the it's kind of interesting because that's that's the line of what we're saying is mm. that it that uh, sufficiency is saying basically it's doing a budget saying yeah. uh, well I'm not gonna this is eat, enough I'm not I'm not planning. To yeah. spend more than I have my resources, and that's true of all resources. I think a lot of about. I think a lot of people can get there <clears throat> relatively. I don't know. I want to say it's easy, but relatively easier with their finances. But we don't live necessarily that way, or that idea with our schedules, with the things that we say yes to, the things, the irons we put in the fire. When I was younger, my mom would always say, "You have so many irons in the fire." I don't even know how you keep it all straight. And she was always right. And I would always run, 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 doing all the things. I want to do everything. And then I would just, you know, like crash for a whole weekend and I would sleep from Friday through Sunday. Yeah. And then I would get back up and when, do it all over Back again. when we had young bodies. Yeah, for yeah, I couldn't do that. Yeah. I can't I, even make it till 1030. Well, well but, college, studying, yeah. studying for finals, you know, oh, they, yeah. it, was, it was an yeah. all-nighter. And then you go take the test. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I just think it's interesting that a lot of people have conquered the idea of commitment in their money, but not, or not commitment, contentment, but not conquered contentment in their schedule. I'm not, like, we're not content just saying, FOMO. just, yeah, we, oh, there you go, FOMO. Yeah, that is, FOMO. That's, that's the enemy of... And if you're an older person, fear of missing out. Yeah. Fear of missing out. Is what that means. Not, right. not everybody would know that. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry, I cut you <laughs> well, off. Well, <laughs> I was worried when you said irons in the fire. I thought, will will younger people understand? Maybe not. What what does that mean? Maybe not. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but yeah, uh, you only have a finite amount of all those things, whether it's schedule, time, uh, hours in the day, yeah. money, emotion, and certainly our physical health can be limited if we don't take care of ourselves. Yeah. And as I said uh, Sunday, you know that's. You know, I'm, I I can't speak as an expert on that part. I've not done a great job in my adult life since uh, I gained a bunch of weight when Chloe was in sight of Amy, and, and <laughs> I had a contest in my youth group who would gain the most weight, and no. I, I won. How <laughs> terrible! Yeah, uh, <laughs> I'm not saying I was wise, uh, but but you know, and a lot of that I carried through most of my life, and then a few years ago, I mean, I got up to. 330 pounds or so was my largest, and I, I've lost about 60 pounds since then. Uh, and it's and it's been four or five years that, that it's happened. You know, I haven't been super intentional about it, but I am now. I'm, I'm at a place now where I'm realizing <clears throat> I don't want... I don't want to get to the end. <laughs> I said this this way Sunday. I, want to, I don't want to get to where I'm, you know, if you will, standing at the pearly gates 
I don't, it depends on what you believe about when you die. Whatever. That's not the. That's not the point. You from you know you're using a, a picture. Correct. Not necessarily right. a they're, theological yeah, term. They're Saint Peter and you know yeah. none of that. But but I don't want to get there and the Lord to look at me and be like, what are you doing here? You know, not that not that he would actually do that, but what are you doing here? You're not supposed to be here yet. You know, I had X amount of things yet for you to do, but because I didn't pay attention early enough and often enough to my health, yeah, I I, I ended up in heaven sooner than I should have. Working in healthcare, I often run into people who have deliberately neglected their health, taken on bad habits, including overeating, or just having a fatty carb diet yeah. all the time, yeah. just eating yummy food. That's what I call it. It's that lifestyle. And that's the things that Paul's and talking to Timothy, the good things in his life. Then they just say, well, you know, uh, when it's my time to go, I'll go. So yeah. this doesn't matter. And yeah. that isn't true. No, it's not true because God has planned days and assignments and good things, Ephesians says, for us to do. Right. And if we don't take care of ourselves and leave the earth early. In fact, when Paul's talking about that in First Corinthians 9, and he's like, I'm running as one to receive the prize. And I think he he literally meant it in a spiritual way, but literally in a physical way. Like, I, I think Paul probably well, paid yeah, attention. Yeah, because he he was, that was when he got old and he yeah. was feeble, and he's still like, saying, I'm I'm running this race yeah. to win it. And I don't want to be I think it included his, his physical life as well, yeah. Well, I think contentment plays so much into all four of those areas, being content in them. Uh, the other the other key, I would say, that we talked about was simplicity. And really, I talked uh, a little bit about being uh, content, if you will, in the simplicity of the things that God wants for, for us. What does God truly want for us to live our lives? So what's, the, what's the ultimate thing? And I, I went to Micah 6, where it says, you know, this is what God... Yeah. This is what God has for you. The old King to James. Do. What doth the Lord require what does the of thee? Re- exactly. Yeah. What we used to sing require? it in a chorus, even if you're old enough to remember the chorus. <laughs> Probably not. I don't even know if I know that one. I'm Are not going to sing it. Not right now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but he says, he says, what does the Lord require of you? And it's, it's to do justly. And I interpret that as to live righteously. Do justice in yourself by living righteously, godly, holy. You know, be holy because I am holy. Live a life that is reflective of the gospel. Paul would say it this way, live a life worthy of your calling. Yeah, I think uh, the the doing justice also does include how we treat our neighbor. Jesus sure. said, love your neighbor. Sure. And I think it includes that. And I think that's even more expressed in that second piece, that love mercy or love kindness is an outward thing, where how we treat other people. We're, we're kind to ourselves probably more than anybody uh, but the call here is live righteously, but then that's an inward thing, but then do justice or do justly by treating other people the right way. And then the last thing he says is, but and, and then walk humbly with God, yeah. which is trust the Lord, serve the Lord, do the things that God puts before you. You know, don't go out there and strive towards something new, which I'm really good at doing uh, <laughs> and getting ahead of the Lord. And and if you if you just break those three thoughts down, and if you would, if we would just live our life that way, simply, it's not complicated. Yeah, it's not com- deal with yourself, treat others right, and walk humbly with God. Trust the Lord, serve the Lord. Walking humbly is the same thing as saying I'm I'm going to live modestly, yeah, rather than extravagantly. It's yeah. exactly yeah. that. Yeah, and and one of the things I said, like if you're if we're living simply, then whether it's in our schedule, it's in our it's in our money, it's in our emotions, it's whatever. It's in our health. We have the room as the Holy Spirit leads us to pivot. And so when the Holy Spirit says, hey, I got this uh, missions opportunity for you, or I've got this, you know, here's somebody that needs your help and needs time from you. You've got the margin to pivot with the Holy Spirit. Don't we see that in the book of Acts with the way the apostles were able to stay in one place a really long time, but as soon as the Spirit led them, they could pivot and they could go. Yeah, they, they didn't uh, have investment into properties and things like that. You know, this is one Makes disadvantage churches have yeah. now. You know, yeah. we, we have large investments into properties, yeah. and we wouldn't just pick up our old church and move it somewhere else. Instead, we're planting churches because yeah. that makes good sense uh, of our resources. But uh, People the, are the same way too, right? We put roots down. Consider these, these, were a, these po- apostles were basically missionaries. Yeah. And they just had a like a, a backpack or something like that, and that's what yeah. they lived out of. Yeah. And then when it when the Lord said, 
go to Macedonia. They said, all right, I'll do that right now. And they, they fold up their backpack, roll know. up their bed, and they're yeah, gone. And they went. I don't know that like that's prescriptive for the church today in the sense of God expects all believers to live that way. I do believe, though, in relation to margin, God is asking us to live with space. So if yeah, you know, we would call them a divine appointment. If somebody walks into your life all of a sudden and oh wow, uh this is an opportunity. We recognize it as an opportunity. We're not running to another meeting, running to a ball game, running all the time, or we're willing to go, you know what, I can I can push that off. I can I can be late to that because this is an important moment. Uh we can do that with our schedules. Uh, especially if you know that it's God. Yes. Prompting you to do something. Yes. You never want to have to say, well, God, I can't obey you because I've committed myself to right. these 17 other right. trivial things right. and I can't change. Right. I can't change. I can't follow. Right. I don't you, don't ever, you don't ever want to be in that position. Well, you know, you, again, go back to the analogy when you stand before God. You know, well, why are you here? You know, but maybe you maybe you took care of your health, and so you get there on time, and you say, "Hey, I sent this guy and this gal and this people and this family and these, these things for you to share the love of God with, or to take time and minister to them, or whatever." What you know, like the Bible says, some have entertained angels and didn't know it. You know, I yeah. sent these opportunities to you, and what are we going to say to the Lord? I just didn't have time, God. Like I, just, I'm sorry, I just I just didn't have time to meet that need. I didn't have time to. Uh, to go after that person that you put my, you know what I mean? Like what, well, a, I, what a foolish I, way. I feel that way about look. my neighbors. You know, I, yeah. I had a neighbor that just suddenly died a couple of years ago. And I thought, you know, I talked with Scott about so many things, you know, the dogs. Yeah. And yeah. and uh, when my grass was too high, he'd say, is your mower broke? You know, we'd, <laughs> <laughs> but he was, he was so nice. And uh, I thought, I never had that Jesus talk with him. I don't know. Yeah. And I went to his funeral, and they played a video of his testimony of how he accepted Christ and had been baptized. Like, and I know I, do I dodged one <laughs> there. God took care of Scott, but uh, I think I'm more aware now. If I if I'm talking to a neighbor, I'm being sensitive. Yeah. I'm going to slow down now. I'm going to talk to my neighbor. Yeah. You know, there we are. My neighbor will stop mowing. I'll stop mowing. And we'll we'll spend a little time talking, you know, and and learning each other's lives and pray. And I've even stopped my neighbors and prayed with them. And I, I for just their think needs. so many of us are just trying to accomplish the tasks, you know, whatever they are for the day or the month or whatever we're dealing with. Mowing the lawn. I mean, yeah. I used to love mowing. It was a good time to sit back and be with the Lord and whatever. And now and then it became just a chore, just something I had to get done because it has to happen, right? And so, like with our neighbors, to look at those opportunities and be able to have the space to go, you know, I can I can turn this mower off for five minutes and have a conversation with my neighbor instead of just waving at them and you know keep right on mowing. Yeah, you can turn it off and take a minute. Well, yeah, um, recently there, there was this terrible storm that hit Asheville, and my kid yep. uh, and his Jason and Cheyenne were down there living there, and the night the storm hit, all the the neighbors. Helped each other. Yeah, they said, "Hey, I've got uh, I've got lighting," and another one said, "Hey, the gas grill downstairs still turns yeah. on," and uh, they were helping one. Suddenly, in the middle of a disaster, they were helping each other because they took the time to do that. Wow. And yet, when they they someone told them there's there's still a cell service downtown. If you go downtown, which was a disaster, and there was. Guns being pulled and fighting and looting, and they said, Wait, "Let's just keep moving. We don't want to. We yeah. don't want to stop." Yeah. So uh, you know, there's two two ways to look at it. You can just be grabbing, 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 but or take your time. Yeah. Help people. Pause. Out, be kind. Rest. Yeah. Well, just before we end here, uh, I, I want to get into those four areas: um, schedule, finances, emotions. Uh, and we'll have a part two to get more, but I think we've got some time we can talk about and maybe give some advice on how do we build, I call this white space, but how do we build white space just in our schedule with our time? How do we do that? One of the things the Lord said to me uh, as I prepared this message was people have to admit that they are addicted to adrenaline and to running and to even... Um, 
accomplishing things, like getting stuff done, their yeah. to-do list. They're addicted to their children's athletic events. They're addicted to their hobbies. Sometimes they're addicted to leisure or even to work. They're workaholics kind of thing. And I, I felt like the Lord said the people, the, the believers have to recognize our allegiance Often in our, the reason our schedule is out of whack is so often our allegiance lies more in those kinds of places than it does in an allegiance to the kingdom of God and being available to the kingdom of God. What do you think about that? We, everything that we do is supposed to be, you know, comes from God and it's devoted to God, everything in our lives. Yeah. And if it's idolatry, if we start shifting, mm. well, I, my allegiance is to my wife more than God, yeah. uh, or my children, or my manager more than God. Yeah. Uh, we we still need to take care of those people, satisfy those people, because that's what God would have us to do. So I I think there's some uh, there's some thinking that we need to do on those things, meditating on on how it. Yeah. How important is this? Is you this... got to examine yourself and and like, what am I addicted to? Am I addicted to you know my job and that schedule? I know I know people that that uh, allow. In some ways, I th- I think to myself, this could be religious discrimination when a workplace doesn't allow for their workers to have Sunday morning, if you will, if that's when their church, their religious tradition is. I don't know if legally if that's religious discrimination, but it sure feels like it could be. I work for a religious institution, in the hospital care. I'm at, and, <laughs> and like I said, I'm, I'm filling in because we have a priest that took t- a month off to go to Africa to be with his family. Yeah, so I'm 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 missing church uh, be- so that he can be with his family. I think so if you're willing, I think of it that way. Well, you know, and I think if you're like, hey, okay, I'm I'm happy to fill in, and it's temporary. That's one thing. Yeah, I'll get my Sunday mornings back when he gets back from. If Africa. it's you'll work Sunday morning or you won't work here anymore, that's a different thing to me. Yeah. Anyway, I I, th- I think we have to do that examination. Another thing I think is, you know, we have to learn how to say no. We have to learn how to say, I'm sorry, I just I just don't have capacity for that. It's very hard for me uh, as the lead pastor because everybody wants me to come to all their things. Everybody, you know, the, the different ministries we have that operate outside of Sunday morning, conferences, we host if, lots if of you, conferences. If you'd be mean to more people, they wouldn't do that. Do... <laughs> Some people think I am mean. Uh, you know, the conferences we have, the special events we have. Um, you know, the, just whatever, the various things, even the birthday parties and the anniversary celebrations yeah. and whatever. Um, and I, you know, I, I am glad to attend as many of those as I can and come and say hi and love people, whatever, but I can't come to all of them. Yeah. And I, and, and it always makes me. Most people really know that. Well, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> most, I, most people. I always worry about disappointing people yeah. who. And, and I appreciate, on one hand, I'm like, hey, I'm glad they want me around, you know, or probably, I've, probably they I've, want my wife around. I have said no to a lot of the same people that you're you're yeah. having to say no to, and they love me anyway. Yeah. I can tell. This well, church is very loving. I, it, it is, for sure. And I think I think people understand, you know, you can't you can't do everything. And I don't ask people to do everything. I understand. I totally get that, too. Like, I'm not asking everybody to come yeah. to everything we do. But I do think there are seasons you have to say, no, I'm sorry, I just don't have capacity for that. I don't yeah. have that, this This time of that. year, actually, it seems like... As we head into the holidays, too. Once, once we hit o- October and just schedules go... Uh, yeah. There's there's nothing Berserk. left. Yeah, because you have to add on so many things between now and the end of the year. Uh, Liz reminded me today, hey, remember, we've got open enrollment for the health insurance, and you're in charge of our health insurance now. So, I mean, Put those are... List. Yeah, and so so there's something that's an unmovable. Yeah. that I can't neglect that, yeah. you know, because otherwise there's no health insurance you for, say, for us next I'm year. I'm sorry, I don't have margin for I'm that. sorry, i got to say no to the health insurance <laughs> this, that's not this what, year. And that's not what we're saying. We're not saying... right. Don't have any commitments, right? We're not saying don't have anything that's important to your family, and you know, ball games and and kids' activities and health insurance. You know, we're not saying that. Yeah. We're saying be really careful, be really careful with what you commit to and what you decide, and make sure you're not giving your life for temporal things, but your what you're investing in is eternal. Yeah, I think that's what we would say. 
We we have to look at the things uh, and prioritize them. You remember the thing about you know which which is the mountain to die on? Yeah. Uh, have pri- you know, well, I, I would have loved to seen another episode of uh, the the rings. Uh, Lord of the Rings. The Lord of the Rings. Uh, what is it called? The Rings of something. Rings of I don't. Know. I don't know. Game rings of Power. Rings probably of power. it is. I think that's it. And but I had a paper due last night, and uh, I told Liz I, I said I'm I'm going to sit down. Yeah. I'm not going to even be in the room with the television because this I have to prioritize. This has to be done on this date, and I had yeah. worked already, so I didn't have room for anything else. But that meant that I said, okay, there's, I'm not going to look at. I'm not going to scroll through videos on my phone. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to sit down and watch uh, Rings of Power. Uh, And and I had to, in the background, I could tell Liz was watching the series that we were watching together yesterday. She's way ahead of me. (laughs) Does that drive you crazy? Is Amy watch ahead of you? Well, I had work Uh, to do. I said, I said, you you go ahead and watch it. And when I when I get all done with the paper, I'll sit down. So I went. I finished the paper. Went in and sat down with her and fell straight asleep on the couch. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you know you have no margin. <laughs> yeah, but you're exhausted and, all the time. But the paper was done, you know, yeah. because it wouldn't have been done if I didn't say I have to put aside. Something. And I would say that's one of the great obstacles today to having margin in our schedule is there are so many obligations and so many good things, so many opportunities out there, and so many distractions. Yeah, so many distractions uh, that get in the way of having margin, and if we're not careful, we don't guard it, then it gets filled up every time. I give you the last word. Uh, one one thing that I think that we need to learn how to do on schedules is when we uh, look at our schedule and we say, "Well, I'm not doing anything except having supper with my wife." You have to put that in. Is that's yeah. a that's that's a hard one. Yeah. That can't be moved. Yeah. And you have to look at some I'm of sorry, those I things. Have an appointment. That yeah, day. it would be yeah, real easy to, time. to tell my wife. Yeah, I told you I'd take you uh, to Christos, but we're not going to do it yeah. because of something. Something came up. Something came up. Well, you you got to you got to work at saying those are going to be the the hard things in my calendar, yeah. even if it's a period of rest that yeah. you have to have in there. Because if we don't get that rest, we've talked about that and before. Fill, yeah. And fill those things in first. Yeah. Fill those things in first before you fill your calendar or whatever with other things. Yeah. Totally right. Totally right. Uh, Great. Great discussion about our schedule. And we're going to have a part two uh, coming up next uh, to go through our finances and hopefully emotions and our health. We'll see how far we get before maybe a part three might happen about this, uh, this important issue. It's a huge issue. And it's a huge piece that the kingdom of God needs to get a hold of. So thanks for joining us today. We'll see you next time on Beyond Sunday. Have a great day. Thank you for tuning in to the Beyond Sunday podcast. We invite you to join the conversation and share your thoughts at connectionpointchurch.org slash beyond Sunday. Spread the word and share this podcast with others. Stay inspired and connected as we explore faith beyond Sunday.